beloved in Christ, you are greeted in the name above all names. You are welcomed to our virtual sermon. May God Himself be at work through His Word and by His Spirit to encourage and equip us. Our current series is indeed about equipping and is portrayed as a toolbox with a survival kit to help us to overcome in troublesome times. A biblical survival kit for COVID and other such things. Today, the Lady Lehoku will be confronting us about what our values are. Vaughn Lowe will add value with praise and worship. There are other items in the toolkit as well in which the church offers assistance and counseling. You may speak to someone at the congregation by dialing 073-573-4869. The contact number to make a counseling appointment at the Moraleta Wholeness Center is 012-997-8035. As we live thankful to God in all circumstances, we also would like to give unto God and for the causes of the church in the community. Ways to support the work of the church are being shown on the screen. The banking details are given as well as the Zapper QR code. Please take note of the reference lines to indicate the application. You may contribute to MConnect or to the SOS Fund for Eternal Food Distribution or for the Hope in a Box Lift External Community Food Project. We would like to sincerely thank you for your love and care. Again, we would like to invite the children to today's Revolution Kids online session at 10 o'clock on our Moraleta Connect YouTube channel. Anzal Yunus completes the journey through Judges with the history of Samson and the message of how to trust God when we make mistakes. And we all do. So let us watch this message from God's Word. Tuesday evenings between 6 and 7 are WhatsApp prayer times. You are invited. We are getting now closer to have small gatherings again in the mini audit on the premises while we still continuing to broadcast the Sunday services virtually on, on our YouTube channel as well. The scheduled service for Sunday 20 September at 8 o'clock is already fully booked. Please let us know in time if you would like to attend the following one. For now, only 50 people may attend. We are praying for the whole COVID-19 pandemic to pass fully and to allow us to have full fellowship soon again. Let us pray. Father, we honor you. Thank you that you are with us and taking us further. Let us equip ourselves from your word and build together the kingdom of God. In Jesus. Amen.
Welcome, family, once more again, that we can come together and have this time of fellowship. We are excited about the series that we are busy with as we continue this week. Uh, Brother Ian last week spoke on who are you. This week I'm focusing on what are your values. And shall we pray, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can gather together and just be on Jesus' feet this time. And Lord, we pray for your presence. We pray for your Holy Spirit to minister to us today, Lord. Speak through my lips, Lord. Let me be the vessel that you can use for this day. And Father, I pray for each and every ear that will be able to hear this word that, Lord, may it nourish us spiritually and strengthen us. In your mighty name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, as I said, that uh, we are talking on the subject, what are your values? Values are things that you believe are important in you, in your life, in your work, in the way you worship, they help us to set out priorities. Uh, Like when we say God is holy, God is pure, God is righteous, merciful, is just, trustworthy, faithful, gracious, and love. We are describing God's character. And all these values make up what we perceive and believe and see of who God is. And so therefore the question is, what are those values you say you can't do without as a person? They are non-negotiable and you can't do without them irrespective of what happens around you. These are the values that you say, I cannot negotiate on. Are your values influenced by what you see in others? Let's take for an example, somebody who's driving a beautiful Maybach or lives in a glass house for that matter. Will you still held on them to that high esteem if you see them living in that beautiful house. When those things are taken away, when that beautiful car is taken away, when that house is no more there, will you still hold them on a high esteem if those things are no longer there? There's a saying that says, sometimes we need to swim against the flow. The world is moving very fast, brothers and sisters. And there are a lot of voices out there and views. They influence how we live on a daily basis. They influence how we see things. Customs and values of this world are shaped by those who have power, if you have noticed. But those who have power many times are the ones who are shaping customs and influences. For in their power, they are able to say words, they are able to use their resources to influence what happens around us. And what I've observed or noticed is that they don't necessarily care about God's will but it's for their own interest. The product and values they promote are very attractive, but harmful to our relationship with the Lord. Everything that they put out there looks so beautiful, so attractive. It brings some form of of, of belonging, especially if one feels some form of loneliness. But in the process of that, we experience distance 
between us and our Lord. So I want to encourage all of us that we need to stand firm on our values from outside influences. Let us remain vigilant. Let us hold on fast on what we believe in. So we have to swim against the flow for it is not only easy, but it's a bit tough, but it's worth it when you look into it and hold on. And this brings me to a point where I remember the Jewish three boys. When you read the book of Daniel chapter 3 verse 18, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the golden statue you have set up. This is Shetrek, Meshach, and Abednego. And this is one of the famous passages that you can get in the Bible that majority of people know of. This regards they stood their ground refusing to worship the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar, threatening to be placed on fire. The fire that they were threatened with was not bigger than what they believed in. And we know that they were thrown into the pit of fire, but it was not only the three guys in there, ultimately. There were four people inside the fire. So they hold on on their faith. They hold on on the values that they have, knowing and believing that there is God who has been with our ancestors. There is God who is with us even today. And now, a fact that God sometimes seems silent when his children go through tough times, that does not mean he is powerless to save us. They knew God was able, but that is not why they worshipped or believed only that. It goes beyond believing that God is able. They worship him for he is omnipresent God. They worship him for they believe he is true, almighty, all-powerful God. They stood the crown, even if it doesn't, it doesn't save us. That's what they say. Even if our God is not saving us, you, King Nebuchadnezzar, would like you to know that will not bow before your statue. Our worship of God should not depend on good things God does for us, brothers and sisters. For us, it is not only on those good things. But for us, is who the Lord is in us. That's what matters to us. He's Lord of all creation. We don't worship him or stay or stick with him only based on what we can get out of God. But we revere him. We, 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 we respect him. We honor him. We believe that as he created all, he is worthy to be worshipped, he is worthy, to be praised, even in the tough times, he remains such a God to us. They were prepared to die without losing their faith. They hold dearly to their values and belief. And the point that I want to bring home is this one, that how do you measure your worth? How do you measure who you are? What are your values? How much you worth? How do you determine your value in this life? How do you determine the value of others around you? For we tend to assign values to others or certain value, we place certain value based on how we perceive their worth to us. We look at the world standards and set a certain mark or a certain value on it. The success or the wealth that you see around us, the status that people are having, 
or certain skills that they have, we start to set a certain value on those people. If we can, if we can match them, that's where the problem comes because we get tempted to try to match up to their standards of their success, standard of their status or their skills. And if we can match our worth to those whom we place value at, we easily accept a poor self-image, not worthy, nothing special about us. We veil ourselves against salaries that we earn, life covers that we take with the insurance companies. Offish, unfortunately, the veil of it. It's something that comes when we pass in this earth. But we need to hold firm and learn from these guys that our value is based on who has called us, and that is Lord Jesus Christ. And we read from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9, I will urge you to read the whole chapter of chapter 9. And it says that, One day David asked, Is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Look at this. David remembered. This is what the devil wants us not to do. He doesn't want us to remember what the Lord has done to us and the value that we, we upheld so much, the value of our faith, the promises of his word, the enemy doesn't want us to be able to remember what the Lord has done to us. But here on verse 1, David remembered. And that is why he's asking this question and saying, is there anyone in Saul's family still alive? And when you go to verse 2, it says that he summoned a man named Ziba, who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba? He asked. The king asked. Yes, sir, I am Ziba. The king then asked him, Is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. There is no way we can show kindness if we haven't experienced such love that comes from the Lord. This kindness, it's not something that we, we own or we boast of, but it is our experience in the journey with the Lord. And the value that we place in our relationship with the Lord, that will bring a conviction, conviction in our hearts that says, I need to do something to somebody else. And as the king has asked, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba replied, yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He's crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. In Lodiba, Ziba told him, at the home of Makir, son of Amir. So David sent for him and brought him from Makir's house. His name was maybe Foshed. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the crown in deep respect. David said, Greetings, maybe Bosheth. Maybe Bosheth replied, I am your servant. Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise. Check this one. I, want, I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Matthew Bosheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. 
you and your sons and servants are to farm the land for him to produce food for your master's household. But maybe Bosheth, your master's grandson, will eat here at my table. Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. We, we know, we know the, 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 the story of, of David, the challenges that he, he got from King Saul when Saul became threatened by what the Lord is busy doing with David in terms of helping him to win the battles. And, and as Saul by then was a king rejected by God, and God placed favor upon the life of David. And when Saul became aware of that, he hated David more. And funny enough, we, we know that David was a friend of Jonathan, whom was Saul's son. They made a vow to each other that they will take care of each other. And when Jonathan and Saul died in a battle, Jonathan's son, by the name of Mephibosheth, was five years old then and fell off from his nurse's hands. And that's how he became paralyzed on his legs. And he was taken to Lodiba in the house of Makir, far away from King David, out of fear that he might kill him. For knowing that Saul was such an enemy to David, and I, I, I pick something wonderful out of this, that there's been more than four instances where David could have killed Saul if he wanted to. But again, that brings me to this point of when you know your value, when you know who you are, when you know who you are standing for, you are able to make decisions that will always bring glory to the Lord of Lords. So I imagine when he heard that David is calling for him, what went through his mind, knowing that he is a grandson of Saul, and here is King David asking for him. When you read verse 6, he says he bowed down paying honor to David, fell with his face down. He felt he was not worthy to be in the, in, in the presence of the king. Now because of himself placing himself on a lesser value, when he came before David, he bowed and he forgot that he is the prince of Israel. And when you read verse 7, what he thought of himself, he said he was just a dog worthy to eat from dog's bowl. But we see David restoring Mephibosheth. We see David giving him back his grandfather's estate and to sit at the king's table. Values you uphold are seen in how you treat others. Let me repeat this again. The values that you uphold as a person or as a believer, the results of that always show up in how you treat others. And we learn from David that he understood his values and he treated Mephibosheth with such respect and honor and dignity. Look, nothing changed physically for, for Mephibosheth. He was still disabled. He couldn't fight the battles as like other men go out to fight in Israel. And to the world's eyes, he remains a worthless somebody who couldn't do anything. And in the king's eyes, he was worthy to be treated and respected and be brought on, on the table's king. David looked at him based on his relationship with Jonathan. That's what love does. That's what this value does. That's what faith does to us. It doesn't show us things that are of less, but it shows us the worthiness of what it is in front of our eyes. And when David looked at Matthew Boshet, I, I, I sensed that he had so many memories that came up of his friendship with Jonathan. 
And therefore, he was worthy because he was Jonathan's son. When the world will never stop telling you that you are just a chance, it just happened by chance that you are where you are. You are worthy of only your salary. Without your salary, you are nothing. It just happened that you have this talent. That's what the world likes to preach to us, to bring to us, that we are where we are. It is because of this thing that happened to you. And all that begins to push you in comparing if you are better, if you have this or that, than the other persons. And as soon as all these things that we hold daily on vanishes, leaves us with such a huge disappointment. For we don't depend on the Lord for our provision. We don't depend upon the Lord for our happiness. We have placed our happiness in the hands of others. For we think less of ourselves. But I want to bring a metaphor here for you. A cycling race. When you cycle, you, you focus. For you are riding something that has got only two wheels. And therefore, it makes you to focus and be careful on the path that you are charting forth. So, then people who are involved in cycling race, they always put shirts that are printed with different kinds of messages. And now, this is like our life. We are peddling, we are going somewhere, and we cannot move forth if we are not focused as believers. For all of us are peddling, and we are wearing some form of shirts that are printed with different kinds of messages. And when you look at these cyclists as they race, each and every one's shirt has got certain Message, not only message, but again even colors. So then, imagine yourself wearing a shirt that is written, I'm nobody. Imagine yourself wearing a shirt that is printed, I'm peddling for no one. But here's a message. In life, all of us are peddling. The question is, for whom are you peddling? Serving is one of our values as a church here in Moreleta Park. Peddling to serve others with integrity. We love to serve. We believe in serving. So I want you to think of a, of a shop filled with so many shirts, with different messages, different colors. You have a choice to pick any shirt you like, any message on it. And in this shop, it is free. You don't have to pay anything to get this shirt. And maybe on, the, on those shirts, you get this ways or these values, generosity, love, elegance, caring, honesty, empathetic. And the list goes on and on. You just pick what you like. You don't have to pay. It is for free. Which one are you going to pick out of all these shirts? What kind of value or what kind of statement will you pick and put it on you? And as you pick one of these shirts, you might have or you might hear a voice saying to you, you pick, say for instance, you pick K, and you hear a voice that says, you with that personality of yours, no ways. How can you pick K? How can you wear K on yourself? You don't look like somebody who cares. Those are the voices that are negative, that likes to come to us. Say for instance, you pick 
honesty and here's a voice that comes and say come on please you honest it can't be it cannot be remember what you did remember what you said yesterday that is a voice that comes and when this voice comes it doesn't remove the shirt in your hands you still have the shirt you have the power to put on that shirt with those prints that says honest despite all these voices can you still take that shirt and wear it proudly that's a question me and you that we need to ask ourselves and be able to provide an answer that despite these voices i'm going to wear this shirt despite all these voices this is important in my life now you made a choice to wear this shirt pedal more towards that direction that value that you subscribe on hold on despite the voices the noises that you hear that are coming for the voices will keep on coming check if you can continue despite what you hear from your ears you need to hold on tight you know who you are you know whom you have believed the values that you uphold will keep you pedaling in this journey of life and when you read 1 peter 1 verse 18 it says for i know that god paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors and it was not and it was not it was not paid with mere gold and silver which lose their value check that this the lord was not paid with mere gold or silver which loses their value it was precious blood of christ the sinless spotless lamb of god when a ransom is paid we all know that it has to do with slavery it has to do with freedom or setting free somebody or some people against their headless and god through his only son purchased us with this heavy price rescuing us from the tyranny of sin proving our worth proving our value that we are worthy we couldn't escape on our own christ had to come for us to receive this value that says the precious blood that's a price that can pay for us to be set free our worth is beyond gold and silver he took up the cross to bring value to us so we may be able to see it and dine on the king's table it is only if we can remember what the lord has done in us that will always have a word of testimony to stand against the enemy and declare that we are children of the most high god we subscribe to the values of peace we subscribe to the value of care honesty integrity faithfulness that's who we are and when we know who we are before the lord no matter what happens around us or beside us we'll be able to stand firm and proclaim like those boys and say even if it doesn't happen now but i believe and i believe that with my god on my side i'm more than a conqueror it's my prayer that today that you understand who you are and when you understand who you are you are able to stand firm and proclaim the goodness of the lord which has given us the right to be called god's children i urge you that you allow holy spirit have openness in your spirit for the lord to show you those kind of values that you need to stand up and 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 and, and improve on who you are don't listen to the voices as you pedal in this journey don't listen to what the voices are saying don't be ashamed to pick that shirt with the words that are say that i love you 
stand firm and hold on fast and accept. Acceptance, it's one of the important things. You accept, you commit yourself. You determine yourself to achieve what the word of God says about you. And you follow through, through the calling that God has placed in us. And may the good Lord bless you. As you ponder on all this, and as you look at yourself, as you look at your community, at your family, at your church, what kind of values are you subscribing on? What kind of belief are you having? Does it bring change to your life? Do you impact people around you? At workplace, at school, in the community? Check what type of values are in your life. And may the good Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, it's my prayer that today we stand firm and proclaim his goodness in our life. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can be reminded, Lord, it is not us with our own power or our experiences or our intellectual minds that can sustain us but it is our belief in who the word says you are. It is our belief in the testimony that we hear every time, the experiences of having an encounter with you as our Lord. Lord, we thank you that you can restore back to us. You can remind us, Lord, of the love that you have put us on by dying on the cross for our sins. And therefore we understand how valuable we are. Our standard cannot be determined by what the world says to us. Any voices that comes from us help us to be able to stay focused and pedal in this road that we are heading ahead, believing that the Lord is our guider and the Lord is our light in our path. We give honor and glory to your mighty name today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Lightning, Lord. 